Hi, I'm Tom Hess, and I'm glad that you've come here to check out this video to get more information about a guitar teaching job. I'm going to make two assumptions. The first assumption I'm going to make is that I think that you're probably looking for more places in which you can find a job. The second assumption I'm going to make is that once you go to one of these guitar shops or music stores or private music schools, that you want to be certain that they hire you instead of hiring somebody else. Well, that second part is what I want to talk to you about today. And this is actually quite easy to feel totally confident that you're going to get hired and actually get hired. And let me help you to understand what you need to do. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to not look at the situation from your point of view. Because frankly, the music store owner or the director of the music school doesn't care about you or me or anyone else. They don't care about our point of view. They only care about their point of view and what their needs are and what their problems are. And when they're looking for a guitar teacher, they're looking for someone not, to just, not just to simply teach lessons to the students they may have there. In fact, for many people, that may not even be on their list of priorities. What they really want is someone to help them solve their problems. Now, what are their problems? Well, they could have a variety of problems, but here are some very common ones that they have, which I'm going to help you to show them how you can solve it. Problem number one. Their past experience with guitar teachers probably wasn't very good. They may have a high turnover rate. They may have guitar teachers who are not very dependable, who are not very reliable, who are not very consistent. That's a very common problem among music schools and among you know guitar shops and music stores. I know because I used to manage uh, guitar shops in the past and I've taught at the college level to, as a guitar teacher so I know what these problems are. Another common problem that they have is that the guitar teachers who they may have had working for them in the past don't seem to retain the students that they get for long periods of time. Now, why is this bad from the music school's point of view or the guitar shop's point of view? It's not simply because those students don't ultimately become really good players if they quit. From their point of view, it's because it costs them lots of money when students quit. They need to bring in new students to replace the ones who just left. And that's very expensive. It's expensive to get a new student. And if, they have, if their new student is only being used to replace one who just left, then the music school or the music store doesn't grow. Right? I mean, negative one plus one equals zero, right? There's no gain. There's no growth there. So it's very common for managers of music stores or directors of music schools to feel very frustrated when students don't stay for long periods of time and new students just go to replace those who left. So, there are other issues that music schools and music stores may have, but those are the two big ones that is on their mind when they're looking for a guitar teacher to hire. So, here's what you need to do. If you want to walk in there and be absolutely certain that they're going to hire you, that they're going to be interested in you, that not only are you going to be the best choice for them, you want to be the only choice for them in their minds. Okay, So when you talk to them, when you, when you write your resume, when you call them, when you go in person to speak to someone, you want to address those two issues very specifically. Okay, Now of course you need to talk about how you're passionate about teaching guitar, which I assume that you are, and that you've had some good success in helping students in the past, which I'm going to assume that you do. But you also need to tell them that you understand fundamentally that one of the worst things for their business is when the students that are being taught don't stick around for you know a long time. A long time is you know years, not a few months, but years. And that what you are personally committed to doing for your own benefit, for the benefit of the music school or music shop, and for the student's benefit is retaining students to stay with you for long periods of time so that, number one, you can continue to make money, 
Number two, so that the music school continues to make money, doesn't have to keep feeding you new students all the time. And number three, so that your students actually reach the result that they came there to get. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, this is just common sense, Tom, and don't all guitar teachers have that goal? Well, first of all, it may be common sense, but it's not common practice, okay? Most teachers never even discuss those things when they go in for an interview. The second thing is, even if other teachers have this as a goal, they never verbalize it, never talk about it to the director of the music school or to the owner or manager of a music store. So from their point of view, the director or manager's point of view, they don't know that this is a goal for you, that this is something you're committed to doing. And if by you just simply telling them and explaining to them that this is a goal for you, this is a priority for you, you just shot right up at the top of the list. If there is a candidate who has a music degree, and maybe you don't have a music degree, you might be thinking, well, that other teacher has the advantage because he has the credential that I don't have. So of course he's going to get the job first. No, 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 no. That's not true. He may have a little edge, but when you start communicating things which the music director is thinking, hey, this guy is going to solve my problems. This guy just has a degree, and frankly, I don't know if he's going to solve my problems or add to my problems. Your, the director is likely to hire you, the one who's going to help directly solve their problems. Okay, now not only do you have to verbalize this and communicate this, but then once you are hired, you have to actually follow through and back it up. And this is the area where you probably are going to need some additional help on, and I've got some free online resources for you to check out right now at the link below, which will help you in the areas we just talked about, plus many, many other areas that are going to make you not only be the top choice of the guitar teacher to be hired, but in order, it's going to help you to make so much more money and help your students get so much more value out of the lessons with you. And all these things are going to come together. Come to my website, check out some free online resources. I'm not selling anything here. This is free stuff. And you're going to take these self-assessments and you're going to answer these specific questions to discover where you might be strong, where you might need some help on to get stronger, and what things you're doing now that are good, what things that you're not doing that are so good, or other things that you know that you're not even aware of at this point. And depending upon how you answer those questions, I'm going to give you specific feedback and specific advice on how you can help yourself improve in all of these different areas which are listed in these assessments. I'm going to send this to you in email. And this is, this is also free. I'm not charging for this or anything like that. This is a great opportunity for you to advance your skills as a teacher and advance your ability to get hired and advance your ability to make a whole lot more money.